We're going to look at some of the basics of plastic analysis in this tutorial and then in further videos we're going to build on that and determine the plastic capacity of various beams. So let's just jump straight in then. If we stress a piece of steel and we record its stress and strain values and up until its failure, we should see and know that the graph would look something like this. Part 1 shows the elastic range where it's still linear, reaching a yield point here. And then part 2 is the ductile range of the steel and then progressing into part 3, strain hardening of the steel. And as it hardening, obviously, the stress slightly increases um, uh, with the strain again, but then plateaus off. Uh, this is idolized by most textbooks into this simplified version here, where we, we still have the elastic range linear, and then the plastic range is just simplified to just plateauing off after the elastic range. If we look at this a bit more detail and we look at, say, an I section beam and we look at the strain distribution diagram, whilst it's in the elastic range, it will obviously be linear and it will be these two sort of triangle shapes on top of each other. Now, why is it this triangle shape? Well, if we just, for the time being, look at a rectangular beam, uh, say we just have this rectangular beam here, we know that when that's loaded and it begins to deflect we will see the top portion of the beam begin to decrease in length and the bottom portion of the beam increase in length with the maximum and minimums occurring at the bottom and top of the beam respectively. Now why is it these two triangles sort of shape? It's because say we look at the edge of this beam uh, I've just sort of outlined it here. If once we've loaded it, we d we just said that it increases and decreases in length at the top and bottom of the beam, which would look like this. Now, hopefully, you can sort of see if I trace over it where the strain distribution diagram coming is coming from, whilst it's still in its elastic range. Now, moving on, the stress distribution diagram will just look a lot similar to the strain diagram, obviously still linear. If we move on to look at the plastic range, we will begin to see uh, this is it sort of behaving partially plastic here, and then it will move on to fully plastic where there is no linear portion of the distribution diagram. Now if we have this beam here and we load it and we record a moment that we apply to this beam and also the curvature of bending and we plot a graph, uh, this would be the typical graph that you would see. The graph is obviously showing the development of the beam section curvature due to the applied moment. At this point A that I've labelled on the diagram, the stress over the whole area of the beam is at yield. No more force can be generated. Hence, the section cannot take any more moment. However, the strain will continue to increase. Therefore, the section is undergoing a substantial rotational deformation i.e. increasing in curvature without taking extra moment. This is known as a hinge without a, with a constant moment. And this is known as a plastic hinge, and I've just sort of drawn this on this diagram. This is just what the deformed shape would look like when a plastic hinge occurs. Now, just sort of try and get your head round how that would happen. We have a plastic hinge form in the middle and this is how this this beam in this scenario would fail um, once the hinge forms in the middle and it cannot take any more moment. 
Hopefully you've grasped everything that I've just briefly covered in this video. As I say, we'll be building on this fundamental concept that we've just sort of gone over in the following videos and then be looking at problems for this topic.